Hello and welcome to another episode of Virtual Legality. I'm your host, Richard Hogue, managing member of the Hogue Law Business Law Firm of Northville, Michigan. And today we're going to follow up on a story that we did last week on Gran Turismo 7, a game that I am very much enjoying, but that has had its share of struggles, both staying online and keeping its customers happy. Now, this story is actually about that second factor, keeping customers happy, because at the same time that they were having so much trouble being online, getting folks actually into the game, when they had put out a patch last week, they also reduced the amount of credits, the main currency in the game, that were received by players when they actually race, which was limiting their ability to purchase cars in that game. Now, as you might expect in that given scenario, the internet has its own response to that nerfing of credits granted, including, as VGC reports here, some exploits. First posted to the PSN Profiles Forum by user Septimore, the script, which is currently only compatible with Windows machines running the PlayStation Remote Play app, repeatedly enters inputs into the game in order for it to essentially run laps of the same track over and over, gaining credits each time. So the basic gist of this particular exploit is that you can use the PlayStation Remote Play application on your computer to then script out what your controller is going to do and leave it running in order to earn credits. Now, I looked at this story and I said, that's interesting, but I'd be willing to bet that Sony has something in their contract that directly talks about this kind of exploitative use of either the Remote Play application, the game itself, et cetera, et cetera. Much to my surprise, the Sony contracts aren't quite as clear as you might expect on this very important point in the kind of live services multiplayer industry. In order to go into that, we have to look at some of the contracts we've looked at before. So we've got, again, the Gran Turismo 7 page. We've got all the stuff we've talked about before. Online play optional, bit of a misnomer in my opinion, but if we scroll all the way down past all the marketing content, all the things they want to sell you, you get to everybody's favorite section of one of these pages, which is, of course, the legal terms. If we look here at the legal terms, you see it directs you to the software license, usplaystation.com slash software license, which is exactly what we looked at in that original video talking about exactly what this game was. Now, in that license, you might expect to see this covered. Hey, you're not going to cheat. You're not going to exploit our game. You're not going to go and get credits using a script, or you're not going to use remote play in some kind of untoward fashion, but you won't find it in this main agreement. It says this software product license agreement applies to your use of all software products on authorized PlayStation systems. Your use of the software is also subject to the terms and conditions set forth in the PlayStation Network Terms of Service and User Agreement, the software license agreement for your PlayStation system itself, the system that runs it, and the PlayStation privacy policy. So there's other agreements that are what we call incorporated by reference in terms of law, and those are also going to apply to your use of this game, which means we have more to read. Now, we can strike out a couple of these. We know the privacy policy isn't going to apply, but ideally, for something this important, it would be in the baseline license, or it would be a restriction on the grant of the license that they afford you. Grant of license, the software is licensed to you, not sold. SIE, Sony Interactive Entertainment, grants to you a limited non-exclusive license to use the software for personal use on your PlayStation system. It talks a little bit about using their share or create button. And then it says, any rights in the software not explicitly granted to you in this license are reserved by us, SIE, including rights to all intellectual property contained in the software. And you agree not to do bad things. Rent the software to other people, lease, sub-license, modify the software, create derivative works from the software, create or make available unauthorized mods, or copy, publicly perform, or broadcast the software without the express prior written consent of SIE LLC. Now, those are restrictions that kind of dance close to, but don't exactly hit the target of somebody running a script to emulate controller inputs while playing the game on remote play Otherwise, legitimately, it's not really modifying Gran Turismo. It's not really decompiling it or otherwise doing any of these very bad things. It's an unauthorized use of scripts, but it's not an unauthorized modification to the software itself. So this is a kind of uneasy application in the language. This isn't what you want when you're looking at things, right? Lawyers write up contracts and they try to anticipate every possible issue that could happen, but they're human beings and they try to anticipate things from their own knowledge base. And 
This is the first piece of evidence that we've seen in this particular context that Sony isn't really a live services company just yet. They aren't really dealing with, hey, we've got this virtual currency. Hey, how can people exploit that? We should probably have a paragraph that says you can't just do anything to go and collect that. You can't use bots. You can't do scripts. You can't do these various things. And we kind of feel covered with some of this stuff but it's not a perfect fit. Nobody's actually digging deep into the code to change how Gran Turismo functions with this particular solution. So I thought that was interesting when I saw it in the first instance. But as I said, we have some other agreements to look at. So we can look at the system software license agreement. I can promise you it's not here because this is only about the PlayStation's system itself. Subject to this agreement terms, SIE Inc. grants you a non-exclusive, non-commercial right to use system software solely on your PS5 system, and then you won't do those very bad things to the system software. Nothing like that appears to be happening here, right? You're using the application on your computer. You're running a script to emulate controller inputs. You aren't messing with the PlayStation 5 system software at all, so that's a poor fit. Now, one potentially good fit that isn't in that list that we just talked about is the application itself. Right, The PlayStation Remote Play application is a separate piece of software that actually has a separate end user license agreement, which looks like it hasn't been touched up in some time. The date given here is September 1st, 2018. That's that's a while for a software license, but you'll see it's probably not going to be very useful to Sony in any event. This agreement is between you and Sony Interactive Entertainment, access to or use of the application software. That's the Remote Play app. That's what you see In this video, Remote Play app has to be used to access Gran Turismo on your computer and then have the script run above it. That's what we're talking about with respect to this license. And its use is expressly conditioned upon your acceptance of this agreement's term. So I thought, okay, this might be where some kind of terminology lives that's useful, that says you're not allowed to combine software in a weird way. And again, just like we saw in the initial software license, the one covering Gran Turismo 7 itself, you got language that's close but maybe not a perfect match. The license grant, SIE grants you a limited, non-transferable, non-exclusive, non-commercial right to use the application software solely on the device. So you can use your PlayStation Remote Play app on your Windows PC or your Macintosh, and it's restricted as follows. You may not modify the application software. I don't think that's happening here. I think that you've got a script that's running separately, and I don't think the actual underlying application software is being modified. Now, four here is interesting. You may not use any unauthorized, illegal, counterfeit, or modified hardware or software with the application software. That might be where if you are Sony, you would say that, we got them. Okay, you're using remote play, you're using unauthorized software with it, and that's a problem. Maybe they do, but it's not specifically talking about this kind of issue. It's not specifically talking about scripts and bots that are using the application the way it's intended, just not from a human perspective. And finally, the one I noted here is you're not allowed to exploit the application software in any unlicensed manner. Now, these are the restrictions in the license, so that's a weird umbrella term that just kind of refers back to itself. I'm not sure that that's very helpful, but certainly exploit is the kind of word we're looking for. We're looking for cheating. We're looking for exploit. We're looking for bots. We're looking for scripts. We're looking for references like that and we don't see them here. So you're gonna have to establish that it's unauthorized software being used with the application software that is a qualifying use under these restrictions that would otherwise constitute a breach here. Now, I think that's a fairly reasonable argument for Sony to make, but it's not the kind of kill shot that you are actually looking for if you're a commercial lawyer, right? As I said, you're drafting these things, trying to anticipate every issue. And then when an issue arises, you find yourself reading the contracts again and hoping that you've got a piece of language that gives you the rights from the corporate side that you need in order to stop whatever bad acts that you want to have stopped. And there is no question that Gran Turismo 7, Sony Interactive Entertainment, Polyphony Digital, everybody else doesn't want this kind of thing happening. Right? You don't nerf the credits in your game taking on all that goodwill loss, all those public relations issues, if you don't want to try to do something important in your view for your game. Now, the cynical among us would say you're trying to sell things to us for real money. I think the note that was given that says, well, we really just want people to race different ways to get cars and we want them to have value and rarity, etc. You can give the benefit of the doubt. I tend to be more cynical on this particular question. Either way, however you come at it, 
Sony doesn't want this kind of thing to happen. So they're looking through these contracts, trying to figure out what might apply. And the best case for them might well be the PlayStation Network rules themselves. Now you think Gran Turismo 7, you're playing a single player campaign. You're trying to get credits that get you a new car, which isn't independently some kind of advantage. Does this even really apply? And that's the first question we have to answer. So this applies to access to and use of the PlayStation Network. You accept this agreement by creating an account for PSN, by making a purchase on the store, or through any other use of PSN, or by continuing to use PSN after being notified of a change to these terms. And then there's the usual boilerplate here. But what's most important to us is, does Gran Turismo 7 even qualify? PSN services include PlayStation Network, Store, Plus, Video, Now, Direct, and websites, products, and services that Sony and its affiliates offer through or in connection with those things. And then the content we're referring to includes the games, music, movies, services, currency, vouchers, communities, and other digital products or content through PSN, presumably made available through PSN. It's not really much of a sentence there, but legalese being what it is, if you bought Gran Turismo 7 on the store, the PlayStation store, it is a PSN service and PSN content is everything that you acquired through those PSN services. So strikes me that Gran Turismo 7 probably is PSN content. Certainly the coins that you would buy for real money that you'd have to interact with the store directly are, but is the game itself. More questionable is if you bought a physical copy of the game and then you bring it in and then you put it in your PlayStation 4 or your PlayStation 5, are you now dealing with PSN content? You didn't buy it from the PlayStation Store. Are trophies enough? Is the fact that it can use your username enough? Let's say you never go on multiplayer at all. Of course, part of this is that the game itself isn't entirely clear about whether or not it's online or not, right? We've talked about this before, but if you look at the Gran Turismo page here, this says effectively online optional. And we know that Sony knows how to write these differently. We know that it's third parties know how to write this differently. If we look at, oh, I don't know, Destiny 2, we see that it says online play required. So we know that you're going to have to interact with Sony's multiplayer service, with PlayStation Network, with potentially the store. We know that when you're talking about Destiny, it's entirely unclear when you're talking about Gran Turismo. Making things more complicated, Gran Turismo goes down when the PSN goes down. As PlayStation Lifestyle reported earlier today, PSN is down following the latest PS5 system update. Sony's had a little trouble with patches and updates in the last week, and they reported that as part of that, Gran Turismo 7 went down with it. Now, other folks in the comments to my earlier video pointed out that there were various places that the online requirements of Gran Turismo 7 were reported. I don't think that changes my earlier analysis that says at the point of sale, you're really not getting that proper information and we can't be expected to know all of these articles everywhere. But Gran Turismo 7 requiring an online connection isn't really ever described as a PSN concept, but it kind of dovetails with the notion of what a PSN game, PSN content would be. So this is a very kind of complicated set of questions here, but I think for purposes of this discussion, we can argue that Sony can say Gran Turismo 7, even if purchased in a store, because it's always online, even if they might not be advertising that enough in certain aspects, is going to be PSN content, which means once again, we're looking for something that specifically talks about bots or scripting or cheating or exploits. And we find something a lot closer than the baseline licenses in, unfortunately, the very generalized code of conduct section in their PlayStation Network rules. Now, if we scroll down a little bit further in this code of conduct section, we'll see the sections that are remotely close to what we're looking for. So section 510 says, do not cheat, okay? Or use any bugs, glitches, vulnerabilities, or unintentional mechanics in content or the PSN to get an advantage or to gain unauthorized access to content. Now, they're not breaking in to Gran Turismo 7. Is this unauthorized access if you go and collect coins and buy a car that you couldn't have bought if you didn't do this particular exploit? Maybe. What does it mean to cheat? Certainly, the immediately following list from Do Not Cheat is about problems with the game itself, bugs, glitches, vulnerabilities, unintentional mechanics in the content. This particular solve for our lack of credits doesn't actually implicate bugs or anything like that in Gran Turismo 7. It's just controller inputs using a remote play functionality. 
How about do not use unauthorized software? Hmm. Again, just like we talked to about with respect to the application, the remote play application itself, that's close, right? You could say that the script is unauthorized software that's interacting with your application, with your underlying software, with the PlayStation Network in an untoward way. And that's going to be a pretty solid argument, but it's also a couple of steps removed from actually saying what is happening here. So it's not a perfect one. Do not use unauthorized software, including non-licensed peripherals and cheat code software or devices that circumvent any security features or limitations included on any software or devices. Now, is this circumventing limitations? I don't believe it's circumventing security features. It is unauthorized to the extent that most things that are made in the world aren't authorized by Sony Interactive Entertainment, but you can see how Sony might frame an argument here, but you can also probably see why that argument wouldn't be as strong as it could be if they were just specifically saying you won't exploit our stuff using scripting. Finally, section 513, do not make available any cheats, technological measures, or other methods, that's an umbrella term, designed to enable or encourage any collection, selling, or trading of PSN content, including any virtual currency, goods, or effects, such as coins, points, tokens, gold, gems, weapons, vehicles, buffs, power-ups, trophies, rewards, or badges. I don't know how they came up with that list. I envision some associate somewhere trying to list out what could be virtual effects, uh, but they include coins, and so we're going to include them for purposes here. If you made available the cheat, the original scripter of this particular issue might have a problem. You don't actually see using these things do not make available or other methods designed to encourage any collection, including all of these various things. Do not create or participate in any exploitation of price differences of virtual items by any means, which isn't happening here at all. So you've got these kinds of answers that are close and the unauthorized software one is the closest, but they also appear to just be gliding around the edges of an issue like this. So when I read that article, when I was about to tweet about it, I was looking at it saying, okay, I'll find the sentence that says, you won't do these things. And I will put that out there for people just so that they know it. And it became a video because I look at this and I say, well, Sony isn't actually covering exactly what they want to cover. Doesn't mean they won't be able to have a cease and desist letter or win a lawsuit even, but it's several steps harder than it otherwise should be. And what do I mean by that really? Well, we can look at a couple of examples, right? We can look at how Blizzard, for instance, treats World of Warcraft. And we can see what this looks like when you actually are considering the problem from a legal point of view. Blizzard may suspend or revoke your license to use the platform if you do the following. Create, use, offer, promote, advertise, make available or distribute the following or assist therein. Cheats, i.e. Methods not expressly authorized by Blizzard influencing or facilitating gameplay, including exploits of bugs, thereby granting you and any other user an advantage over other players not using such methods, or bots, any code or software not expressly authorized by Blizzard that allows the automated control of a game or any other feature of the platform, for example, the automated control of a character in a game, hacks, accessing or modifying the software of the platform in any manner not expressly authorized, and any code or software not expressly authorized by Blizzard that can be used in connection with the platform or any component or feature thereof, which changes or facilitates gameplay or other functionality. This is what I mean when I say that Sony's licenses are close, but they're more standard software licenses. There's more what you would see in an enterprise contract to say you're not gonna reverse engineer it, you're not gonna do these various things, with very little thought at least as far as I can see, to this particular scenario, meaning that their lawyers, meaning that their institution probably hasn't thought about it a lot. You can see another example here with respect to Bungie. You will not, in a very similar kind of concept here, license restrictions do the following. Display or use any part of the program except as expressly authorized and or hack or modify the program or create, develop, modify, distribute, or use any unauthorized software programs to gain advantage in any online or multiplayer game modes, right? Now that's actually expressly limited to online or multiplayer, but we are in fact looking at the Destiny license. So they're pretty much covered there, as we said, Destiny, very specifically, online play required. But you can see in both Blizzard's terms of service and Destiny's terms of service here that they can included the language that specifically 
talks about the problem here, which could be ascribed to a sophisticated party like Sony. If a court were to look at this and say, look, you have all these other examples, you know how to write something like this. And yet when I'm reading these various sections, you aren't exactly saying that. You've got this unauthorized software, you've, but you then bring in cheat codes and peripherals that don't actually talk about the game. Hey, you're just playing the game. You're playing it in an automated way. And these other companies have figured out how to talk directly about that. If you aren't doing that, a court, I could imagine, could say, well, if you didn't write it that way, you must not have meant it that way. And we can't just apply these umbrella terms in a manner that the other party to a contract like this one can't understand. And why is that important? Because Sony claims a whole lot of things if you breach this particular section. Violations of our code of conduct may result in moderation action. That makes sense. Taken against your account or your PlayStation devices. They can kill your console access. We may also notify law enforcement or another appropriate government agency. Wow, that seems like a big deal. When? If the breach involves a threat to the life or safety of yourself or others, Okay, that makes sense. All right, if you've got a threat to safety, okay, you could call law enforcement or any other activity that we believe to be unlawful. Not even reasonably believe. Doesn't having actually have to be unlawful. If Sony believes it might be unlawful, they can call in the feds on you. And by the way, any kind of breach of these kind of contracts is at some level unlawful. So courts and various legal services are gonna be very careful to interpret these sections and to enforce them. And Sony really needs to be dead on with what they want to do with them because they're asking for a heck of a lot of power in a contract that frankly, a lot of people aren't going to read. And even the court system knows that, even in the United States where we generally enforce these kinds of cascading incorporated by reference and user license agreement kind of terms. So Sony really needs to be careful and really needs to be direct about what it is against and why it has a problem with it, which at the end of the day and the end of this video might well be why Sony bought Bungie. There's a lot of press release commentary in their acquisition documents that say, hey, we need live services technical support. Seems like they probably need live services legal support as well. Who can blame them? They're getting into a new area of game making. You don't have to love it. I know a lot of you don't like live services, but certainly just reading their contracts, while I think they probably can stop it with some of the language in there, it's not nearly as good as it could be. And honestly, we want that transparency. We want Sony to be specific about what they want and what they don't want. And even consumers that might not otherwise like it benefit from that kind of transparency. If you enjoy conversations about the business and law of video games, pop culture, technology, and more, please consider supporting this channel. We cannot do it without viewers and listeners like you. I do want to mention we are very, very close to 100 patrons, which is just fantastic and mind-blowing. So if you want to be a part of that number, please do check it out uh, right away, maybe. Maybe we'll accelerate that growth uh, in the Patreon. Otherwise, if you just want to subscribe, ring bells, upvotes, downvotes, comments. YouTube loves comments. It also loves downvotes, so please don't uh, neglect that button if you're so inclined after you watch the substance of this video. Every little bit helps. If you caught this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. And if you listen to it as a podcast, thank you so much for listening. And I will catch you on the very next episode of Virtual Legality. Virtual Legality is a YouTube video series with audio podcast versions presented as commentary and for education and entertainment purposes only. It does not constitute legal advice and does not create an attorney-client relationship. If you have legal questions about the topics discussed, please consult your own legal counsel.